Looking for a movie that mixes humor, shock, and sadness? Look no further than The Charge of the Light Brigade. This 1936 film might just surprise you with its range of emotions and unexpected twists. But before we dive into the funny, shocking, and sad facts, let's set the stage. The movie tells a tale of bravery and tragedy amidst the backdrop of war. Set during the Crimean War, it follows a group of soldiers as they navigate the chaos and confusion of battle. With its gripping storyline and memorable characters, it's no wonder this movie has stood the test of time. Now, here's the kicker, there are plenty of behind-the-scenes stories and historical tidbits that will leave you in awe. From amusing anecdotes to heartbreaking revelations, you won't want to miss a single detail. So, grab your popcorn and settle in for a movie experience like no other. And remember, the best is yet to come. Keep watching for more funny, shocking, and sad facts about it. What qualities do you think make this movie a symbol of the industry? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories and memories related to this classic film. The Charge of the Light Brigade is a 1936 movie set during the Crimean War. The plot revolves around the disastrous charge of British light cavalry against Russian forces. The movie is known for its portrayal of the bravery and tragedy of war. It takes place in the Crimean Peninsula, primarily focusing on the British military encampment and the battlefield. The main characters include Major Jeffrey Vickers, his brother Captain Perry Vickers, Elsa Campbell, and Clarissa Morris. Major Vickers is a dedicated officer torn between his duty to his country and his personal convictions about the war. Captain Perry Vickers is his impulsive brother, eager for glory on the battlefield. Elsa Campbell and Clarissa Morris provide romantic interests for the Vickers brothers, adding depth to the storyline. The Charge of the Light Brigade premiered in 1936 and received critical acclaim for its realistic battle scenes and emotional depth. It was nominated for multiple Academy Awards, including Best Director and Best Picture. The film is considered a classic in the war genre, highlighting the harsh realities of conflict and the sacrifices made by soldiers. In 1936, the movie propelled a young actor to superstardom. However, it wasn't just the actor who benefited. Following the movie's success, she also gained widespread recognition, rising into Hollywood's top ranks. In 1965, she achieved another milestone by becoming the first woman to lead the jury at the Cannes Film Festival. This achievement solidified her status as a pioneer in the industry, breaking barriers for women in film. Despite her growing fame and many opportunities, she faced a big decision about a famous role. When Jean Arthur turned down the role, it was offered to her, along with other actresses. However, she decided against it, choosing roles that matched her artistic vision and personal goals. Instead, Donna Reed took on the role and made history with her performance. Looking back on her career and the influence of the movie, it's clear she made a lasting impact on the film industry. Her contributions, both on and off screen, continue to inspire actors and filmmakers worldwide. Indeed, her work lives on through her memorable performances and groundbreaking achievements, shaping the world of cinema for generations to come. This story, intertwined with the movie's legacy, shows her lasting influence on film. In late 1944, the author began writing an autobiography titled Games, Gossip, and Grease Paint, which remained unpublished. However, numerous extracts surfaced in the Sherlock Holmes Journal Winter Issue 1998, Volume 19, Number 1. She received the Medal of Arts honor from President George W. Bush at a White House ceremony in the East Room on November 17, 28. She was praised for her persuasive and compelling skill as an actress, ranging from Shakespeare's Hermia to Margaret Mitchell's Melanie. Her independence, integrity, and grace won creative freedom for herself and her fellow film actors. During the climactic charge, the musical score incorporates several samples from Russian composer Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky's 12 Overture. This piece was written to commemorate a different battle in a different war, which Russia emerged victorious from, unlike the battle depicted in the film. The Charge of the Light Brigade is a film from 1936. The lead actress, Olivia de Havilland, was pregnant with her daughter Jaisal during filming of another movie called The Ambassador's Daughter in 1956. She achieved notable success in her career, winning Oscars for The Heiress and To Each His Own, and receiving three nominations, including one for Gone with the Wind. Olivia de Havilland and Joan Fontaine, her sister, made history by becoming the first sisters to win Oscars and be nominated for Oscars in the same year. Their achievements remain significant in the history of cinema. 
The Charge of the Light Brigade, released in 1936, is a historical war film. Olivia de Havilland, a longtime resident of Paris, France, was a part of the cast. She lived in Rue Beneuville and used to read scriptures at the American Cathedral during Christmas and Easter until around 2012. Olivia was born in Lewisham, London, England, the daughter of Walter Augustus de Havilland, a patent attorney in Japan, and Lillian Fontaine, an actress from Reading, Berkshire, England. She was the elder sister of actress Joan Fontaine and acquired a small coffee plantation in South America in her later years. Olivia's father authored the ABC of Go in 1910, offering a comprehensive description of the Japanese board game. Throughout her life, Olivia remained connected to her family and continued to pursue her interests both on and off the screen. The Charge of the Light Brigade stands as one of the notable works in her filmography. The Charge of the Light Brigade is a 1936 film known for its historical portrayal of the infamous charge during the Crimean War. Nigel Bruce, a member of an old Scottish family, played Louis Charles, Dauphin of France, in other notable films like The King Without a Crown and Marie Antoinette. Beyond his acting career, Bruce's family ties included his younger brother, Sir Michael William Selby Bruce, 11th Baronet of Stenhouse, who was both an author and a soldier. As a producer, Bruce actively connected the film industry with external business interests. He held a position on the Bank of America Advisory Board for several decades, even serving as its chairman, which granted him influence within the board of directors. In the charge of the Light Brigade, Bruce's performance stood out, showcasing his versatility as an actor. The film, set against the backdrop of war, captured the tension and drama of historical events with a blend of action and emotion. Bruce's involvement in various films, including those centered around historical figures, demonstrates his range as an actor and his ability to bring depth to characters from different eras. The Charge of the Light Brigade, released in 1936, was accompanied by some interesting trivia. Firstly, Warner Brothers' publicity department misrepresented Errol Flynn's origin, claiming he was from Ireland when he was actually from Tasmania, an island state off the coast of Australia. Secondly, in the last year of his life, Flynn declined an offer to star in a major swashbuckling series for us television, citing his anticipation that the project would be of poor quality. This decision was influenced by his previous experience in Captain Blood, where he played a similar character. Lastly, The Charge of the Light Brigade marked the second of nine films featuring Warner Brothers' romantic couple Olivia de Havilland and Errol Flynn. These tidbits provide insight into the film's production and the actors involved. The movie The Charge of the Light Brigade, made in 1936, stars Errol Flynn, who's famous for his daring actions in films like Against All Flags from 1952. Flynn's performance got him noticed, and he ranked 55th on Entertainment Weekly's list of greatest movie stars. Olivia de Havilland, who's also in the movie, became the third person to win an Oscar and live to be 100 years old after George Burns and Louise Reiner. The movie is a great example of Flynn's talent mixing action and drama really well. It shows how good Flynn was and how long de Havilland stayed in the movie business.